Hello everyone and thank you for the opportunity to introduce Gestalt Matcher database to you. In the following I will shortly refer to it as GMDB. GMDB is a database for medical photography that focuses on rare monogenic diseases. According to the FAIR principles, it aims to improve the openness and accessibility of scientific findings in medical genetics and to enhance collaboration amongst researchers and clinicians. It currently contains more than 5,000 cases with more than 500 different molecular diagnoses. So this is the agenda for my talk and before I introduce the database to you, I would like to give you a short overview about our motivation and aims to create GMDB. Most of you are already familiar with face 2 gene which is an application with artificial intelligence that helps to detect syndromic phenotypes in facial photos. The deep convolutional neural network within phase 2 gene is called Deep Gestalt and has been described by Gurevich et al. in Nature Medicine in 2019, it's supporting roughly 300 different disorders. However, since there are probably more than 2000 distinct phenotypes, phase 2 gene cannot yet support the differential diagnostics in any patient. This case is an example of a phenotype that Diebgestalt cannot recognize. And what about you? Any idea about the disease gene? Do you think you couldn't answer the question because there are no characteristics in this phase or because you just have not seen another patient of this kind? With this slide, I would like to explain the difference between a classification approach, which is Diebgestalt, and a clustering approach, which is Gestalt Matcher, the further development of the AI. The architecture of a deep convolutional neural network consists of an encoder and a classifier. Similar to clinicians, an AI must first be trained with enough images to learn the facial gestalt of a disorder. For deep gestalt, more than 20,000 cases have been used to learn about 300 syndromes. The classifier, which is the final layer of the network, can therefore only be used to assess the similarity to syndromes that were learned before. The minimum number of cases that is required to model a highly distinctive phenotype is seven. This also means that disorders for which there is not enough image data, there is no support from the classification approach. This is the case for most of the ultra-rare disorders. The main idea to support also ultra-rare disorders and even phenotypes that haven't been linked to a gene yet is comparison to single cases instead of disorders. By this, a match with a solved patient could establish a diagnosis. Technically, this is done in Gestalt Matcher by using the encoder to convert all features of a facial image into a vector of numbers. This vector points to a specific position in a clinical phase phenotype space that can also be used to measure the distance to other individuals that populate this space. The distance between a test case and other portraits of solved or unsolved cases of the gallery quantifies the similarities. Thus, let's take the input image as an example. The phenotype of the patient's disorder was not represented in the classification layer. In the clinical phase phenotype space, however, there is another very similar case and in the end it turned out that both phenotypes are due to the same de novo mutation. LEMD2 has now also been published by Marbach and colleagues to cause a novel prokaryote syndrome, which also explains the similarity to HGPS. Even though with Gestalt Matcher we need fewer images to match patients with ultra rare or unknown disorders, the performance of Gestalt Matcher and other AIs will continue to improve by increasing the size and diversity of the training set. Moreover, a large and balanced data set is essential to avoid ethnic bias. Thousands of images have been published in the recent years in the literature. But these data are not machine readable and distributed over many sources, for example in case reports, reviews, in patient support groups or other databases. For instance, the London Medical Database that phase 2 gene uses for training is not accessible to the scientific community. Thus, one of our aims is to achieve a large and diverse data set by crowdsource labeling that can also be used for the training and testing of AIs. 
This will probably be instrumental in shortening the diagnosis of many rare genetic disorders and thus relieve many patients and their families of a diagnostic odyssey. But also you as clinician or researcher can benefit from contributing your cases. With this database we would also like to address a problem of preprint servers like McArchive. So far, all medical photography has to be removed because their board does not have the capacity to check where the appropriate consent has been obtained. That also means case reports cannot be made accessible. We now have an agreement with MedArchive that GMDB can be used as a repository for such data. Our long-term vision for GMDB is even a more dynamic model of publishing that allows to update cases easily, for example, after a new patient consult. Another way to use GMDB is the research platform, which I will introduce in more detail later. It allows clinicians to match multiple of their cases in the database and quantify their syndromic similarity to each other, but also to the other cases of the gallery. This can be used, for example, to determine whether the phenotype is specific for a rare known disorder. This would, for example, be considered as supporting evidence for the pathogenity of a variant of unclear clinical significance that was found in a diagnostic grade gene. It is also possible to quantify the phenotypic similarity of an unsolved case to other unsolved cases to form case groups that can be further analyzed. This could lead, for example, to the identification of potentially pathogenic variants in a novel disease gene. We are also planning to implement a dynamic consent model that allows participants to decide directly what kind of research they want to participate in. It will be possible to give broad consent, but also to give approval or disapproval to individual projects. The aim is to involve patients and inform the research participants in the best possible way. The first feature of GMDB I would like to show you is the gallery view, which you can think of as the Pinterest version of Omen. Like AI, a clinician must first learn the phenotype of a disorder in order to be able to recognize it later. The gallery can be used to display many portraits of a disorder at a glance. In this way, a phenotype can be classified even better, also with respect to different ethnicities. This can also be used, for example, to compare the images with actual unsolved cases. As you can see, GMDB is not limited to facial portraits. Additionally, you will find, for example, X-rays, MRIs and phonoscopy images. You can filter the gallery by genes, disorders, phenotypic series, publications, users or your own patients. So, for example, if you're interested in Cornelia de Lange syndrome, you can search for a disease causing gene like NEPBL, or you search for the phenotypic series by entering the name of the disorder. So, how can you contribute a case to GMDB? Let's get back to our LEMD2 case. I will now show you how to upload this photo to GMDB. So you first enter gender and ethnicity and you can also take some notes. For published cases, you need to enter the PubMed ID or a DOI. You also need to fill in the corresponding author so we can ask for reuse. Subject and family numbering should be used for relatives. You can also add HPO terms and the disorder if it's known and already listed in OMEN. After entering the affected gene, you can select the test method and the model of inheritance. If available, you can also enter the HGVS code of the disease-causing mutation. Of the medical photography, you can take a screenshot and upload it via drag and drop. It is possible to enter age and the type of image. We also ask you to provide your opinion about the distinctiveness of the phenotype. You have to score whether the medical imaging data was supportive, important or key in establishing the clinical diagnosis. However, this distinctiveness also has an influence on the performance that the AI can theoretically achieve. We can then use the information about distinctiveness for evaluation purposes. Now I would like to show you how to use the digital consent and upload an unpublished case. 
There's usually a lot of bureaucracy involved in involving a patient in a study. With the GMDB, Digital Consent, we have developed a process that allows you to add your patients completely online, saving you a lot of paperwork. Participants can access the study information and sign the consent form directly online. Afterwards, they can view their own case and also upload pictures themselves. So for uploading an unpublished case, entering the data is similar to the published cases, but you can also select if the participant belongs to a patient support group. Here you can choose which consent you want the participant to sign. If you already have appropriate consent, you can check the box consent obtained. When you click on the invite button, an email template is generated with a personal access link to GMDB. After the participant has followed the link, the consent appears and can be digitally signed. The study information is also displayed. Now the participant can also make entries and upload photos, but he or she only gets access to his own case. For other users, the case will only be visible in the gallery if the consent is available. The consent itself can only be viewed by the clinician who obtained the consent. As I mentioned before, we are working on building a research platform that we will probably launch by the end of October. Here's a very brief preview of what the research platform will look like. To add patients, you can select the cases that you want to compare in the experiment directly in the database and send it to the research platform. Your experiments are saved and can be viewed, edited or extended at any time. This is what the results of an experiment could look like. The left matrix shows the pairwise distance of the individual cases and the right one shows the pairwise ranks for the subset of all images from the gallery. You can also visualize the position or relationship of cases from the clinical phase phenotype space by a TC projection into 2D. Similar phenotypes form clusters and can also be used for phenotypic comparisons. So if you are interested in this project, you can scan the QR code or follow this link to our website. GMDB is a service maintained by the Association for Genomic Diagnostics, which is a non-for-profit organization. Its usage requires access control and you have to register first. Registration is only possible after receiving an invitation link from an existing user. If you are interested in signing up, please do not hesitate to contact us. If registered, you can send an invite link to your colleagues via email using the Send Invitation button. We also always appreciate feedback as we continue to update and expand the website. In the end, I would like to thank all the colleagues and collaborators who contributed to the study. And also thank you for your attention. I'm looking forward to your questions and feedback.